you are getting some revelation because we know you're in the word because you know you're on vacation. And we thank God, hallelujah, that mm -hmm. what you desire from this trip is what you're going to get. Hallelujah. Restoration, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Revitalize and strengthen, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to be ministering tonight. I'm going to talk to you. Actually, I'm going to be, you know, like I was saying, God wants us blessed. You know, and God has prepared so many good things for us, so many good things. And this is our blessing book right here. This is our promise book right here. Hallelujah. You know, Apostle uh, White, you know, spoke, I mean, such an awesome message. The lessons that I learned from Father Abraham. Hallelujah. And, you know, I, I sat there as he talked because Abraham is one of my favorite biblical characters, you know, and he gave us the, the five keys that, um, that caused the release of the blessing to Abraham. Hallelujah. And tonight we're going to talk about Abraham, but we're going to be focusing on key number two. Abraham obeyed the word and the voice of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, I, I want you to just kind of keep this in the in your mind, in, in the forefront of your mind. Just, just keep in your mind, and you may have it there already, that God blessed Abraham, but we are blessed with him. We are blessed in him. Amen. In Genesis 12, 1 through 3, this is where God made a covenant with Abraham. We're going to hear some things repeated. And in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, this is where God told, the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and unto a land that I will show thee. Hallelujah. Let me stop in, Lord. Have your way tonight. Lord, we pray for the anointing of God. Without the anointing, we accomplish nothing. But God, let this be to your glory. Let every person that entered these doors tonight, Father God, receive what they need from you. You are the one that blesses. Holy Spirit, have free course. Do what you desire to do tonight. I thank you, Father God, that everything that is needed in the way of miracles, of signs, of wonders, that you are releasing in this house in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our midst. We will not, Father God, ever take your glory. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And verse 2 says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in or through thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. In that verse, I want you to take note of a few things that God spoke to Abram. First thing that I want you to think about is that God wants your family blessed. God wants your family blessed. Amen. He wants all of the families of the earth to be blessed. Hallelujah. You know, and I was that I was studying, I thought about God always chooses a trustworthy vessel to guarantee the success of his plan. He chose Abram for a reason. He chose Abram for a reason. And I'll share that with you in a few minutes. But also another thing that in these verses that you hear is um, his promise says, I will bless them in Abraham. Bless who? He's going to bless your family in Abraham. Now, 
He said, I will. So when God say, I will, you can count this being done. Your family is blessed. So if I ask you, is your family blessed? Some people may say, hmm, a little bit, no. But if God says that your family is blessed, he cannot lie. What God has said, he has already done. Hallelujah. So your families are blessed. Our families are blessed. Hallelujah. They are blessed with Abraham or in Abraham. So first, though, Abraham had to do something. He had to obey God. He had to leave his, the land that he knew of, that he was living in. He had to leave his family. Uh, he had to go to a land that he didn't even know of. He didn't know where he was going. And he had to do this in order to receive the blessing that God said he was going to bless him with. He had to obey. He had to do that. So sometimes, in order to receive your blessing, you got to do something. Most of the times you do. Most of the times you have to do something. We can't just sit down just because we see it in the Word and think, oh, it's going to fall on me. It's not going to fall. It's not going to fall. We have a part in everything, and God has a part. Amen. And we're going to give it that on that a little bit more also. But Abraham had to leave what was familiar to him, the comfortable places that he knew. He had to take, he had to leave it all. But he chose to obey God and he departed. He left that land and he headed out, I think it said like the, the next morning. He didn't waste time. He didn't waste time. You know, sometimes when, we, when God tells us to do something, you know, and we think we have heard God, sometimes we know we have heard God. And you say, well, well I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'll need to think on or you think about, you know, um, I'll do it mm, tomorrow. I'll do it, you know. And then you think on it too long. And if you think on it too long, sometimes after a while you say, mm, you know, I waited too long. It's, you make a, an, an excuse, in other words. May God speak, move. Amen. Hallelujah. So Abraham heard the word of God and Abraham obeyed the word of God. So God made this covenant with Abraham. Amen. And when God makes a covenant, usually there is something that you must do. It's a part, it's kind of a, it's a relationship thing. You know, that's something that I must do and that's something that God does. So we each have a part. You know, and when, if you remember from, on, from Sunday, uh, because of the covenant, because of the relationship of being the friend of God. How many friends of God do we have in this house tonight? Yeah, we all are, are the friends of God. Yeah, he said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. We are in a friend relationship. Amen. So, you know, just how Abraham received because he was a friend. You know, you know a friend. And you know when a friend says something, hey, I can take his word. It's good. Amen. But he said, he said, well, shall, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do when he was going to, uh, when they were going to go and destroy uh, Sodom and, G and Gomorrah? And then uh, in verse 19, this is what he said. He said, this is why he chose Abraham, Abram. He said, for I know him. I what? I know him. He had to choose someone that he knew was going to be faithful who was going to do what he asked them to do because if the whole nation, the nations were relying upon this person being faithful and being obedient. So he chose a man of integrity. He chose a man that he knew he could trust. So I know him that he will, listen, command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring Abraham that which he had spoken. He knew that Abraham would train his children, that he would lead, take, take them in the direction that he uh, wanted them to go in, that he would uh, command his children in the ways of God. And that's what God wants, wanted from Abraham, because he didn't want to, he wanted a nation of 
men and women like Abraham. You know, and when you say be fruitful and multiply, that's he's not talking about have babies. Just have, we'll just have some babies. He's talking about make some more people just like I made. I made you like this, Adam. I want more people like this. Abraham, this is how I made you. Abram, this is how I made you. I want you to make more like you. He's talking about, you know, duplicating, duplication. Hallelujah. Spiritual. Hallelujah. So Abraham, the friend of God, God wanted him to know just what was going on and what was going to happen. And living word, we are the friends of God, and God wants us to know what's going on. God wants us to know what's coming our way. God wants us to know, and he says we can know by his spirit. We can know by his spirit. Hallelujah. And um, if I get a chance, I'll go there, and that's in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But... I want to go stick with Abraham for right now. Because in Genesis 17, 1 through 6, please go there with me. If it's, it, may, it may be up here. Genesis 17, 1 through 6. Now, Abraham was 75 when God gave, made that covenant. But in 17, in verse 1, it says, And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That's your part, Abram. And I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. That's God's part. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So he's gone back to what he told him before. He said, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. So he said, Abram, Walk before me and be perfect, upright, you know. Walk before me, be sincere in your relationship with me and with others also. But then he told Abram, when he told him, he said, Your name shall no more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abram. Ham. For a father of many nations have I made, have I made. Not I'm not am I going to make. He said, Have I made? I've done it. When I spoke it, it was done. When I spoke it, Abram, when I called you Abraham, you're not Abram anymore, you're Abraham. You're not the one who don't have children anymore. Now you have nations. Nations. Because I have decreed it. It's already done because I have spoken it. Remember when God spoke, son, let light be? What happened? It was. And he saw that it was good. When he spoke all those things for those days when he created the earth, everything he spoke, he saw, and it was good. Why would things change, change in, in this situation? What has God spoken to you? What has God spoken to you in this book of promises? If God has spoken it to you, know what? God sees it that way. Whether you see it or not, God sees it just like he has spoken it. He sees it, and in his eyes, it's good. Huh? How did he do that? Because he looks through the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he has purchased redemption. He's purchased wholeness. He's purchased health. He's purchased wealth. He's purchased peace. He's purchased victory. He's purchased life. He's purchased light. He's purchased everything we need. 
salvation for our whole household, not part of them, our whole household. He has done it all, A-L-L. He has already done it. We got to change our vision to line up with his vision. Because he's already said, look, my, 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 your, my, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. But you know what? My prayer is, God, let my thoughts become your thoughts. Let your thoughts become my thoughts. Let your ways become my ways. Yeah. God, give me the heart just like yours for the people. Let my eyes see what you see. Let my eyes hear what you're saying. Hallelujah. Glory. When God spoke, it was done. Listen to this. In Timothy, one of the same verses, he says, he opened up with, I am almighty God. And then he was speaking of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom he had, he had, he had talked to. Because in this verse, he was really talking to Moses. He said, they knew me by the name God Almighty. The name God Almighty in the Hebrew is El Shaddai. El Shaddai. The God of invincible power. What's invincible? The word invincible means too powerful to be defeated, too powerful to overcome, incapable of conquer, of being conquered. But they, they say they knew me as the God Almighty. They didn't know me as Yahweh, the Redeemer. Hallelujah. But now he's talking to Moses here. But he's talking of Abraham. So listen to this. This, this. this blew my mind. El Shaddai comes from the root Shaddad, which means to destroy or overpower. And he said, they know me as the God who overpowers. Hallelujah. Think on this. When Almighty God came, the first thing he said in 17.1 was, I am Almighty God. That's how he introduced himself in, in that verse. So the God who overpowers, that's who I am. And then after he told him, look, I am the God who overpowers, then he said, kind of say, by the way, uh, Sarah, Sarah is going to have a baby. Uh, you're going to be a daddy. You're going you're gonna to have plenty of children. You're going to have nations come out of you. But you know, when, you, when you're serving a God that cannot be defeated, when you're serving a God who's invincible, who's just, when you're serving a God whose power is over, overpowering, he's over a powering God, hey, anything can happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know how it says, says Abraham believed God. Abraham believed his word. Hallelujah. You know, in John 6, 6, 3, it says um, how God's word is a spirit and his word is a life. And, and one version says that um, his, his spirit is at work producing life. When he speaks the word, his spirit gets busy producing the life that the word has decreed. Hallelujah. So the spoken word of God who calleth all things that be not as though they were, calls what was impossible, hallelujah, to manifest. Here's this old man and this old lady whose body, she says, pretty much dead, especially in reproduction, you know, but God brought life, brought forth a life out of those vessels, hallelujah. Glory be to God said it, and God did it. And Isaac was the blessing manifested. Glory be to God. You know, the blessing of the Lord is the overpowerment of God. I'm going to say that again. Because it's something that Apostle stressed uh, on Sunday also. The blessing of the Lord is the, is the empowerment of God. You know, God said he overpowered He's an overpowering God. But you know what? For us, he has come. He empowers us. Wow, he's on the inside of us. He, what Jesus said, if you love me, my father will love you. I will love you. And we're going to come and make our home in you. We're going to take up a boat in you. 
So he is, we are empowered with God, with Jesus, and with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We are equipped for victory. We are equipped to win. Hallelujah. You know, and when, when uh, you know, sometimes you, you see people, you know, and they're, now you talk to people, you know, and they begin to, to, to talk about what's going on in, in their lives, you know, because they're not seeing what they desire to see, you know. And, I, I, you know, but did we see anywhere in this word for Abraham, um, number one, did he receive his blessing right away? Did he receive the manifestation right away? No, sometimes I want it right now. I want it now. You know, I want it now. Haven't done anything to deserve it. Not even really serving God, but I prayed and he didn't answer. I ain't gonna serve, I'm not gonna do that no more. I'm not praying no more, I ain't talking to God no more. He, 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 he not really real. You know, I've heard it, I've heard it. He don't listen to me, yes he does. He hears every prayer you pray. Hallelujah. You know, but Abraham didn't get his manifestation right away. But did God love Abraham? Sure he does. Uh, do we, do, you know, sometimes, you know, we think, well, God loves this one more than he loves me. Uh, this is God's favorite. It's a bunch of baloney. God is no respecter of persons. Not, he's not a respecter of persons. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The point happened was Abraham knew that God was an overpowering God. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I think I've said it myself, sometimes how, you know, did Abraham mind, you know, uh, play tricks on me? Oh, you really don't have this baby. You know, and that may have been, but that's not in the word. It's not in the word. The word of God tells me in verse 4 and 20 that Abraham did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but he was strengthened in his faith. And he gave glory to God. Because he was fully convinced that what God had promised, God was able to do. Amen? Yeah, so he is, and he is our father. He is the father of the circumcised. And he's the father of the uncircumcised. Abraham is. Because God made him a father of many nations. And he did what was necessary on both points to be the father of the circumcised and the uncircumcised. Amen. And so when we get to the New Testament in Galatians, number one, we are made the righteousness of God with Abraham. If you look in um, in Romans chapter 4, it speaks and it tells us that he received the sign of circumcision, Abraham did, as a seal of the righteousness that he had made, that he had been made by faith, while he was yet uncircumcised. And this was so that it, this was to make him, Abraham, the father of all who believe but are not circumcised, so that the righteousness might be credited to them also. See, it was a credit to, to him for righteousness because he believed. But he did this so it could be a credit to us also. So God made us righteous in Abraham. But not only that, Galatians, in our Galatians 3.29, the word of God says, uh, and if you belong to Christ, how many of you belong to Christ? I do. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Heirs. According to the promise. That's the promise that we read in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Hallelujah. So, if you belong to Christ, you, you are the descendant of Abraham. According to the promise. You know, and, and, and that is God's plan. That's God's plan. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, you become the righteousness of God. You become his righteousness then. It doesn't take you to go and do all these things that they try to tell us we got to do. You got to do this. You got to live right. You got to walk. You got to do. You got to walk this walk and talk this talk. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, you become the righteousness of God. You become his righteousness. 
Now, as you begin to do the other things, you know, that he has told you to do in this book, and your, and your life begins to align up with this book and align up with what his, what, what his plan is in our walk, you don't become more righteous. You just become holy. You, you're getting, you get, become more and more holy. The more you walk more like him, the more holy you become. But you're already righteous. You're as righteous as you're going to get when you first get born again. You can become holier, but you can't become more righteous. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. So in this promise book here, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 tells us that the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So the promises of God are in, again, everything is in Jesus. The promises of God is in him through whom we have become righteous. And yea, and in him, amen. So his promises, we can just say yes to the promise. The word yes is the Hebrew word for amen. And what that yes means is when you say yes, you're saying it's true. Yes, amen, it is true. Holy God, you're holy, amen, it's true. You get to name your our Father's prayer, amen, this is true, amen. Glory be to God. And it's to the glory of God that we do this because all that we have, God gave us to the, through, through the Son. You know, remember when he says in 2 Corinthians, old things passed away, behold, all things are new, all things are of God. Then it goes a little bit further and tells us how God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to him. God was in him, reconciling us. God was right there. God wanted his, his children back. He wanted us back. So he was right there getting us back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God told Abraham in uh, 17 and 1 of Genesis, the first thing he said, one of the things, first things was, walk before me and be perfect. Walk before me and be perfect. Be upright. Be sincere. Okay? But for some reason, Sarai thought she would help God out. Is she going to help God to bring, she's going to help God's promise to come to pass by using Hagar. And you know, the, you know the rest of that story, you know. But if you notice, well, you, we know that God was there, was, was looking. But did God try to stop that? No, he didn't because he told them already to do what? And I'm sorry, he didn't tell them. He told Abraham, he said, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. You know, I thought about this while I was reading. So I said, you know, in the Garden of Eden, God didn't talk to Eve. Who did God talk to? Adam. And he told Adam not to eat of this tree. So sometimes, women, we need our men to help us to stay in line. The apple was pretty. It looked good. Here, you bite some too. But sometimes we need our men to help us to do what we need to do. And sometimes men, we need you to step up and don't worry about, about how we're going to feel about it. Just do what you got to do. Do what you got to do because God, the main thing is to obey God and to obey, obey his voice. Amen. But afterwards, now after, after the, the Hagar and, and Abraham thing, then God appeared again to Abraham because he was not pleased. And he made it very clear to Abraham that if he was to receive the blessing, the covenanted and the promised blessing, that he had to be faithful he had to be obedient. You've got to do it my way. There is no other way but my way. Amen. And that's in Genesis 17, 18, and 19. And so Abraham, God is talking to Abraham here again. And he's telling him some, some things, you know, about what he's going to do. And, um, and Abraham said unto God, 
Oh, that Ishmael, this is the son of he and Hagar, might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. The covenant was not meant for Ishmael. The covenant that I, that I made with you was for your seed that I said you would have. So it was like, no, it's for the seed that Sarah will bring forth. So we've got to hear and you've got to obey what God has said. Amen. You know, sometimes God will speak something to us. You know, and um, sometimes the things that he will speak to us, that he speaks sound, kind of sound utterly ridiculous. It sounds like, wow, um, could I really do that? Could I really do that? Can I really have that? Uh, can God really make me rich? The word of God says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. But can God really make me rich? And and it, it, it's kind of mind-blowing because it, it sounds like ridiculousness to you, you know? And because it sounds that way to your head, you don't pursue what God has said you can have. This book is full of all kind of good stuff that God wants us to have. He wants to show forth his kindness to us in this age. He wants to make the world jealous. He wants to make the, the world come to us saying, man, how did you do that? Girl, how did you do that? But we have got to be, we have got to be dogmatic enough about the word of God. Dogmatic enough about what God has said to pursue regardless of how ridiculous it sounds. So God said, I'll give you a debt-free house. A debt-free house? Whew. Can, can God do that? If God said he could, he could. When God told Abram, you're going to have a baby, you know, I am God Almighty. I am the overpowering God. Yes, he can give me a debt-free house. He can give you anything that he's told he can give you. He's can give, he can give you anything he's, this book says that you can have. It's already yours. It's already been spoken. Like when he spoke light. Light be. Light was. He saw it. It was good. When he's spoken to you, it's already yours. You just got to reach out and begin to grab and take back things that you have lost. Take back things that you've let slip. Take back things that the enemy took from you. It's yours. It don't belong to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This book is our manual for life. This is our manual for life. In this book, the things that seem impossible, because we have God with him to him that believeth in God, all things are possible. All things. Nothing is impossible for God. Hallelujah. And all God has asked us to do and with this manual, when you begin to look through it, you know, and God says, I will do this. This belongs to you. He didn't, if most of the time, he doesn't even tell us, you know, um, sometimes you don't have to do anything. You just have to believe. Well, that's the big thing. Just believe. Believe. That's what we have to do. But if God said that he would do it, he says, I will, then he didn't ask you to do it. He didn't ask you to do it. He asked you to believe me. Now, I remember listening to um, Jesse the Planters, and he said uh, he was driving an old a raggedy, I think it said a Volvo or a Toyota or something. Just right after he got saved. And he said the gas was um, 50 cents or so. And he, and he was almost out of gas, and he driving along. He said, God spoke and told him, I want you to have an airplane. And he said, me? An airplane? Uh-uh. You see what I'm driving? Uh, I ain't got no gas in this. Come do an airplane. <laughs> and said, God told him this. I didn't ask you to pay for it. I told you I want you to have one. Just believe me. 
to him that believeth all things are possible we believe in below all we, we are living below our means because we're trying to work to get everything begin to believe the impossible begin to believe God for what is rightfully yours so I just want to challenge you tonight if you've let some things slip I have or you've gone uh, without some things God said you can have I have but you know what I got God's word on it now look at first Peter 5 with me first Peter 5 I'm going to read 5, um, 5b through 6. And it says that God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. His grace is everything we need. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That word, he says, submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. Some humble yourself. That word humble means to submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God's word. Give God's word first place in your life. Let go of what you think. Let go of how you feel. Let go of, of what you see. And your mind, you know, tells you, you can't do that. You can't have that. See, because God say, I have put my laws in that inward parts. In that inward parts. I, and, I, and I put them in their minds. So he's already given us what we need. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We have what God wants us to have to, in order to acquire what God wants to give us. Not want to, what he has given us. It's already ours. But sometimes, because we are not humbling ourselves and we're trying to do it ourselves, that's pride, then we come up short. If we come short of what we really, really desire, you say, well, I'm just take this. We settle. We settle for what we think we can have. And God said, hey, you can have more than that. Amen? So when you submit to God, you allow God to take the care for you. And so the, but the first part of it, we, we generally know about the cast your care on God, on the Lord. But the first part of it that says to humble yourself, that's the part that we really haven't done a whole lot of. Because when you humble yourself, then you take what God says. You determine, you know, well, this is what God has said. Sometimes you're struggling with something, and you, you say, I'm, I'm going to give it to God. And then you do good for a day or two. Then you're back, back again. i got to give it to God because it's just run, I mean, just in your mind. I mean, just, just you know, the thoughts, thoughts. You know, oh, if, if I don't, if I don't do this, my child is not going to get saved. If I don't do this, my child will not get. If I don't do this, you know, I'm not going to have this. I'll be not going to have that. If I don't, God said, humble yourself. He has said, I will supply all of your need according to His riches in glory. I will do it. I will do it. So you find what you need to do is you find a word. I'm going to give you some instructions. If you're struggling with something, then you find a word. See what God said about it. Okay? If it's something that you desire, something big or that you thought I couldn't have, you got to work on renewing your mind first. And then you say, okay, God, you said I can have this. Father, I repent. I was ignorant. But God, I know better now. You said I can have this, and God, I'm going for it. And I thank you for it. But God, what I'm going to do, you know, and, and, and is God, I'm, I've got, I've got to see what you say. So you go in the Word, and you find the Word of God for that. And then the find the Word that you believe, because sometimes I'm looking at scriptures, and I might have, you know, six, seven, eight, but it's like about two or three of them, we just kind of, Click in my heart. It's clicking my spirit. You know, 
And so those are the two or three that I really grab hold on. I really grab hold to those. And then once you get your word, then you obey the word of God. What does the word say? You just, you just do it. Now that you have your word, you got your weapon. That's your weapon. Now you got your word, you got your goods. You know he's already spoken it. You don't have the manifestation yet, but it's yours. Amen? Now, you ready for part two? Part two is you cast your care on the Lord. I'm not going to worry about it, God. I'm going to just cast the care on you. You said I can have it, I'm going to cast the care on you. So you're believing, you're doing your scriptures, and you thanking God for it because it's already yours. Okay? Listen to what First, First Peter 5, 7 says in Amplified. It says, casting all your cares, all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all of them once and for all on him. For he cares about you with the deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Isn't that good? God loves us. He loves us. And he wants us to have the best. He wants us to have the best. Hallelujah. So these things, worry, anxiety, um, all these, these things here, you know, the, the cares. These are the put cares are worry, anxieties. All these things come from fear. They're fear-based. They're fear-based. If I don't do this, this is going to happen. If I don't do this, this is going to happen. So we pray and we pray and we pray. Could be for years, could be for months. And we keep praying because we haven't seen the manifestation. So we've got to change the mindset. And we go from praying over and over. You know when you need to pray. And you begin, if you've given God the care of you, don't have it no way. I mean, it still belongs to you. But you just, I, I, I gave it to Mother Flo. She got it now. So, hey, I can rest. Hey, I can rest this hand. I can rest this hand because she holding it for me. She taking care of that mic. Amen. You gave it to God. He got it. Okay. Let him have it. You don't want to go back tomorrow and get it. Okay. And here's what happens. Or you got your scriptures. That's proof that it's yours. So, you are doing good. And then all of a sudden, the thought hits your mind again. Well, suppose so and so happened. And you got this is what you got to do. You say, well, devil, I gave that to God. And I refuse to go back and get it. Talk to God. Amen? Yeah. But you know what? He, he comes continually because he don't want you to. If he knows if you do that long enough, you keep on believing, you keep on speaking, and you, you stand your ground then he's losing ground. And God is more caring. God is taking care of this every part because he already said he would. Amen? Okay, so but when the thoughts keep coming to your mind over and over and it becomes a struggle, don't let, you're, you're not supposed to be struggling. Say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my mind. I cover my mind with the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the light shining in my mind. In Jesus' name. You may have to do that more than once. But I'm tell you, we're going the devil off. Amen. So when the thoughts of these things keep coming back, they keep coming back, you know, we, do, we, do, we develop habits. We develop habits. The thought, the thoughts, the worrying, the caring has become a habit to you. This is what your mind is accustomed to doing. But you can renew your mind. When you speak the word, you're renewing the mind. The day enemy comes, yeah, so you, you, um, you've told him to go. God got that. And then you go, Father, I sure thank you for allowing me to cast my care on you. I'm so glad you got my cares, Lord God. I'm so glad, Father God, that you are delivering. Lord God, you're moving in my family. I'm so glad, God, that my body is here by the stripes of Jesus. I'm so glad, God, that you are watching over my seed, God. Doesn't matter where they are, but you've got them in the palm of your hand. Thank you, Lord God, that the seed of the upright, hallelujah, shall be blessed. Hallelujah. The seed of the, of the righteous shall be delivered. So you put the word out there. By the time you finish doing that, you happy. Amen. The devil will come back again. Do the same thing. Go 
start to praise God all over again. Father, I thank you. Yeah, and praise him and thank him and put your word out there. Amen. Glory to God. And you keep that up until you get your manifestation. Amen. You keep it up till you get your manifestation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You run him off as many times as he come because he ain't that smart. He going to keep coming back. And then after a while, you realize, I'm not coming as often. You know, when, when I, 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 this is not something I came up with on my own. I have been asking God about casting your cares and because I realized I kept going to take mine back. I was taking them back. So I kept asking God, how do you do this? What do I do while I'm, I'm casting out? What do I do? Because the minds, the thoughts were, you know, bombarding me. And, and God, that's how he worked with me. He would send me a book. He would send me something that would teach me. And when I did this, y'all, I tell you, my mind, the peace, oh, my God, it was so good. It was so real. As a matter of fact, after I guess about a week, I asked God, I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do with all this time? Because my mind's so clear. It's so, I need something to do. I need, my mind needs to be doing, I need to be doing something. You know, because I'm not doing what I used to do. You know? Yeah. But trust God. Just trust God. God is our Father. Amen. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for everything you have provided. God, we thank you for everything you have done. God, we thank you for being merciful and gracious and loving and kind to us, God. We pray for showing us your kindness, Father God, in this age, in this generation. We praise you, God, for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for being our light. We thank you, Father God, for being our way maker. We thank you, Lord God, for being a hallelujah. She no more sombra mascataya our strength. God, we thank you when we are weary, we can just run into your arms and rest in you. We are so grateful to have a daddy like you. God, we are so grateful, Father God, for everything that you have done. And Holy Ghost, we thank you that you are teaching us how to access it. Holy Ghost, you're teaching us how to stand. Holy Ghost, we looking unto you. God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, we're looking unto you. We thank you, God, for every provision that you have given us for victory. We have victory in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. Thank you, 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 God, for blessing those five people, Lord God, who may be looking on the uh, on the, the on the uh, live stream. God, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing, for blessing that the blessing of the Lord is upon our lives. We are blessed. Come on, say we are blessed. Say we are blessed. Say not going to be blessed. We are blessed. And the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Does anyone have uh, need prayer tonight? Thank you, Jesus.